Harry the little snail and Dolly the ladybird play with their forest friends in their happy little world. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the little snail always fun games to play, always a brand new tale. Harry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Carnival Winter was nearly over and the forest friends were sitting in Dolly's house. It's time we started getting ready for the carnival, Flutter the Butterfly said. What are you going to dress up as? Berry asked. It's a secret, Flutter answered. You have to keep your costume a secret so that we can surprise each other at the carnival. You're right. Let's go home and get started. We've only got a few days left, Balthazar said. Berry quickly made up his mind. He decided to dress up as a mushroom. He used a white sheet for a cape and made a hat out of a red bowl. He painted white dots on the bowl. Dolly made a flower costume. She cut leaves out of green paper and sewed them on a green blanket. That was her dress and she made petals out of purple paper. Balthazar the bee and Betty the bumblebee worked together. Balthazar dressed up as a devil and Betty dressed up as an angel. Bubble the baby beetle sat in his hammock and started to make his lion costume. The lights were on in every home in the forest on the night before the carnival. Everybody was working on their costume and busy preparing for the celebrations the following day. Then the big day arrived. The forest friends decided to have the carnival at Stanley's house. They all worked hard and decorated the stag beetle's home with coloured streamers and balloons. While this was going on, Rosita the rose beetle was busy making delicious cakes at her house. Dolly, Leapy and Eddie the potato beetle all lent a hand. Then the time came for them all to put their costumes on. Stanley dressed up as a dice and waited for his friends. The first to arrive were Berry and Dolly. He was dressed as a mushroom and she was dressed as a flower. Then Balthazar came as a little devil and Betty as an angel, with Flutter in a crab costume. Leapy looked just like a cactus. Bubble was dressed as a lion Eddie was a chef and Rosita was a bunch of grapes. Her dress was covered in shiny balloons. The firefly was dressed as a pencil and the flea was an octopus. Sam came as a soldier and one of the little ants was dressed up as a pancake. Suddenly, Zephyr the dragonfly burst in crying. It's gone! My beautiful princess dress has disappeared! I washed it and I hung it out to dry, but the wind blew it away! Zephyr sobbed, and the others tried to comfort her. I don't need my soldier hat, I've got a sword, Sam Snail suggested. No, that's for boys! I had a lovely princess dress, but the wind blew it away. We'll make you a new costume, Leapy said. A sun costume. Zephyr liked this idea very much. This yellow curtain will make a great cape, Dolly shouted. And these yellow pieces of paper can be the sun's rays, Stanley said, and took some of the streamers down. They cut, glued, sewed and stitched, and the beautiful sun costume was ready in no time. I can lend you my little lantern. The pencil doesn't really need a lantern, laughed the firefly. Thank you, Zephyr said. She was so happy, she blushed. The forest friends danced and sung all night and agreed Zephyr had the most special costume of all. As what could be more special than a sun that shone at night? Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Spring.
Spring Sports Day. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar were sitting by the lake, throwing pebbles into the water. Berry hit a floating log a couple of times and his friends clapped. Come down to the meadow now. The Spring Sports Day is about to start, Stanley told them all. Their forest friends had already gathered in the meadow. The little beetles all put their running shorts on and stood in line. They all ran as fast as they could. They had to run three times around the meadow. It's not fair! Eddie cheated! He cut the corner! Leapy the grasshopper shouted. There's to be no cheating! Let's start the competition again, but no cheating! Stanley came first, Leapy came second and Balthazar came third. Berry finished last. Balthazar and Eddie started whispering. He's as slow as a snail. Don't make fun of him, it's not nice, Dolly said angrily. Now it's time for the high jump. The one who can pick the highest apple is the winner, Alfonso said. The friends took a run and tried to jump as high as possible. Leapy got the highest apple, Flutter got the second one and Eddie the potato beetle grabbed the third apple. No matter how hard Berry tried, he couldn't even reach the lowest apple. I can't do it. I just can't do it, he sulked. Come on, Berry, you'll be better at the next race. Don't be sad, Rosita said. But Berry was too nervous to join the rolling race because he was frightened he'd crack his shell. The others all lined up and rolled from one end of the meadow to the other. Dolly was the fastest and she won. Now let's start flying, Alfonso said. The fastest to fly to the top of this tree and get a pine cone from there is the winner. The beetles started immediately. Flutter, Balthazar, Dolly and Zephyr all joined the race. Flutter was the fastest and got to the top of the tree first. I can't fly either, Berry snivelled. Don't be so angry, Berry. It's time for the skipping competition now. The fastest skipper wins. The four contestants started skipping. But suddenly, Berry got tangled in the rope and hurt himself. The others were worried and ran over to him. I'm not doing any more silly races. I can't do anything. I'm going home. We have to think of something. We have to cheer Berry up, Dolly said. You're right. What's he really good at? Rosita asked. I know, Flutter shouted. Throwing! That's a super idea, Balthazar agreed. Berry was the only one who could hit the log in the lake. They made five piles. The first one was made out of apples, the second of horse chestnuts, the third of pine cones, the fourth out of hazelnuts, and the fifth one out of pears. Dolly convinced Berry to come back to the meadow. It's time for the throwing competition. Do you want to join in? Rosita asked. Hooray! Throwing! Of course I'm in! Everybody had a go, but Berry was the best. He was the only one who managed to knock over all five piles. You see, Berry, I'm the best runner. Leapy's the best high jumper. Flutter's the best at flying. Dolly at rolling. Rosita can skip the fastest. And you're the best thrower. Everybody's good at something, Stanley explained. Berry got a beautiful, shiny chestnut engraved by Alfonso, which said, throwing first place. The Canary Chicks One day Christopher the Canary met Chloe and they fell in love. Chloe lived in an oak tree not far away from Dolly's house. The new couple built a nest on the most beautiful branch of the tree. Berry and Dolly watched them building their nest from the ground. 
Look, Chloe's been sitting on the nest for days. Do you think she could be sick? The little snail asked. No, Berry. I'm sure she's going to lay eggs and they'll hatch into canary chicks, Dolly told him enthusiastically. Eggs? Chicks? Berry was confused. Of course. Chloe will lay the eggs in the nest and she'll keep them warm until they hatch, the ladybird said. A few days later, Chloe stood up and as she was arranging things in the nest, Berry noticed three tiny eggs. Three! There'll be three chicks, he said to Dolly cheerfully. One morning they heard tweeting coming from the oak tree. Hooray! The chicks have hatched, Dolly exclaimed and gave Berry a big hug. Can we take a look at them? Dolly asked Christopher excitedly. Of course you can, but please be careful. They're still very tiny, the proud daddy replied. Christopher let Berry and Dolly hop on his back and he flew them up to the nest. They're so cute, Dolly whispered. The snail and the ladybird carefully patted the baby canaries. The little birds grew very quickly and they were soon ready for flying lessons. Chloe was their teacher and they got better day by day. We've got to go and get some food. Be good, Christopher told the chicks one morning. And don't even think about flying out of the nest without us. You're still very small and you can only fly with us, Chloe added. But the smallest chick was rather naughty. Nonsense! I'm very good at flying. I'm going to try it on my own, he said and jumped out of the nest. You're not allowed! You're not allowed! tweeted the other two, but they couldn't stop him. The two chicks were hopping nervously around the nest when their parents arrived back. He flew off! Our little brother flew off! they cried. Oh dear, but he's too small. He could be in all kinds of trouble, Chloe cried. Berry and Dolly heard all the fuss and set out to find the naughty chick. They looked for him everywhere, on the hill, in the mountains, by the lake, in the forest and in the meadow. But he was nowhere to be found. Now are we going to find him when it gets dark? Chloe asked, and she started to sob. But then, little lights appeared in the sky. The fireflies had come to help them. We can make light. We'll help you find him, they said. There he is! There he is in the bush! Berry shouted suddenly and they all ran over. The little canary had fallen asleep in the bush. He was exhausted and shivering. Chloe took him in her wings and hugged him happily. There you are. You should always do as you're told, Christopher said. Chloe flew back to the nest with her chick on her back and the fireflies danced around them like stars in the sky. The canary family were soon back together again. Good night, little chicks, Chloe whispered happily as she kept them warm under her wings. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Sandcastle On a sunny summer day, Berry, Dolly, Bubble and Balthazar put on their swimming costumes, grabbed their buckets and spades and set out for Sand Island to build castles. Look at this huge watermelon, Balthazar said in surprise. Oh, let's take it with us. Then we can all have a feast at the end of the day. OK, Berry, we'll take it. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar and Bubble carefully rolled the watermelon in front of them. 
But when the friends got to the top of the hill, the round watermelon started to roll away down the slope. Stop it! Dolly shouted to the others. Bubble pounced on the watermelon, but he couldn't stop it. The baby beetle slipped off and bumped his head. The juicy watermelon just carried on rolling. They all ran after it as fast as they could, but the watermelon was much faster than all of them. Then a terrible thing happened. The watermelon got to the bottom of the hill and smashed into a sharp rock. Our lovely watermelon smashed into pieces. Oh, the watermelon! Balthazar was very sad too. Why are you all complaining? Let's eat it instead, the baby beetle suggested. So the four friends sat down and started to munch on the watermelon. They ate the sweet red fruit until their tummies were full. We'd better hurry to Sand Island or there'll be no time left to build sand castles. Dolly, wait for me, I'll fly with you. Balthazar said. Me too, Bubble added. But I can't fly. Are you three going to leave me here? Berry asked with a sad sob. Let's build boats out of the watermelon rind. This way Berry can sail to the island with us, Balthazar suggested. They selected four strong pieces of melon rind. One for Dolly, one for Berry, one for Balthazar and one for Bubble. They made the masts out of strong branches and the sails out of large leaves. When they were done, they launched the little boats on the water and the wind quickly carried them away to Sand Island. Hooray! We're sailing! Berry said with an excited squeak. They all got to Sand Island with plenty of time left to play. Look, someone's coming and he's got a bucket in his hand. Indeed, there was a cheerful beetle walking towards them on the sandy shore. Who are you? Dolly asked. I'm Sean, the sand beetle. I live here and was about to build a sand castle. Really? Balthazar asked. Can we join you? Of course you can. Let's all build together, Sean said with joy. The five of them built a grand sandcastle with all kinds of tunnels, towers and bridges. Now all it needs is a flag on top. Dolly said, so she drew a picture of Sean on a leaf and stuck it in the very top of the castle. That looks super! Does that mean it's my sand castle now? Sean said enthusiastically. When the sun went in, Dolly and her friends said goodbye to Sean and headed home. Good night, King of the Castle! Dolly shouted waving goodbye to their new friend.